Welcome to this tutorial hosted by Dynamo Nordic. We will show you how to set up a FSI simulation using LSDyna. We will use release R711 in double precision together with LS Prepost version 4.2. In LSDyna today there are a number of different solvers implemented and this FSI simulation will be created using the mechanical solver together with the incompressible fluid dynamic solver. There is a new set of keywords starting with star ICFD. These keywords triggers and controls the ICFD solver. In order to generate and control the fluid domain mesh there is also a new set of keywords starting with star mesh implemented. More information about these keywords can be found in the LSDyna manual. This is the example. It's a 2D case where a rigid body is located inside a fluid domain. The fluid is at rest and the rigid body is given a prescribed acceleration and it will accelerate up to a certain point when the simulation stops. It is strongly recommended to use include files when creating FSI simulations. Since the ICFD and structural solver can be run separately, it's good modeling practice to make sure that these simulations run to normal termination before combining them into an FSI simulation. We will come back to that later. We will start by taking a look at the geometry. And the file I open now in LS Prepost contains the boundary to the fluid domain. And in a 2D case, the fluid boundary is represented by 1D element. So this file contains four parts using beam elements. Make sure that your fluid boundary is watertight, otherwise the ICFD solver will not work. These beam elements now need to be transferred into multi-physics elements. This is done by choosing mesh, multiple solver mesh. Then you need to choose which part is which part that needs to be converted. So in this case, the whole database. You choose mesh to MS mesh. You define a starting PID and you press apply. Accept. And these beam elements now are transferred into multi-physic elements. So, instead of being standard beam elements, these elements now are labeled mesh surface elements. And the nodes defined at the end points of the beams are now called mesh surface node. By now, the meshing of the fluid is ready. When starting the simulation, Elastina itself will create the fluid element inside the boundary. Beside the geometry, we also need some keywords controlling the ICFD solver. As with a standard LSDyna simulation, we also need a part, material and section definition. In addition, you can define boundary conditions of the fluid, for instance velocities and temperatures. In this case, the fluid is at rest. However, we have defined certain boundary conditions on the parts. A free slip condition means that the velocity is not affected at the boundary, whereas a non-slip condition means that the velocity is zero near the boundary. It is also possible to control the quality of the fluid element during the simulation. If the element gets too distorted, Elastina will do a remeshing in order to get good quality of the mesh again. We will now leave the ICFD and move over to the structural input deck 
in LS Dyna. So we close LS Prepost. So let's import the structural input tech into LS Prepost. Uh, this is a fairly standard Elastina input deck. Um, as I said before, it's a rigid material which is given a prescribed acceleration. Um, and what needs to be highlighted in this input deck is that we run this problem implicitly. In Elastina, there are two ways to couple the structural solver to the ICFD solver. Either you can choose a strong coupling or a weak coupling. A strong coupling is more exact but also more time consuming. If you want to run a strong coupling, you define an implicit structural input deck. If you run the structural model explicit, you will have the weak coupling. So let's read in the whole LSDINA database now into LS Prepost. This input deck now contains both the structural part and the ICFD part. So if we look here, we have four parts defining the multi physics elements and one part defining the structural elements. These two solvers are now connected via two keywords. One which is called ICFD boundary FSI and one which is called ICFD control FSI. And you define your FSI connection by giving a PID number here, in this case number 4. So, if we look more closely to the geometry, we see that the edges of the structural parts, the position of those, corresponds to the part number 4, defining the boundary surface of the fluid. So, here we have the structural part, and here we have the fluid boundary. And in input deck, we define this part as the FSI connection between the two solvers. That's the only thing you need to define in order for Elastina to understand that this will be an FSI simulation. So let's take a look at the results. I have now read the D3 plot files into LS Prepost. And if we run the animation here, we can see that the rigid part travels through the fluid domain with an increasing velocity. Um, if we put on the, the, the elements here as well, you can see that starting here, um, that um, once the element gets too distorted, Elastina will do a remesh in order to maintain good quality of the mesh. You can also look at uh, different properties using fringe plotting. Uh, if you click on MS and ICFD, uh, you have the possibility to, to look at, for instance, fluid velocity. Like this. You can, of course, control the fringe levels. So you have a fixed number on your, on your fringe bar. If you would like to have more detailed information about your velocity field, you can always uh, include vectors and you can also control the size of your vector.
So now you can clearly see how your fluid moves during the simulation. This simulation was run on uh, 8 cores MPP and uh, MPP is the way to go if you want to model large phenomena since the scalability of MPP is very good in Elastina. It is also possible to look at ASCII data from a simulation. For instance, if you would like to look at uh, drag forces on the rigid body during the simulation, uh, it's possible to, to, to load that. You load the file and you may plot it to see how the force level is acting on the body during the simulation. This concludes this tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. For further information, look at our website www.dynamore.se or contact us at support at Thank you very much.